again. Pastor Nathaniel Oregon here. I'm just here to uh, share with you another daily devotional. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about heart preparation and uh, what that looks like uh, in preparation for confession. Uh, but also, um, it's not something that we do. It's, a, it's really something that God does for us, but we do it in cooperation with Him. And, uh, and so I think helping, uh, explaining what I'm going to talk about today will help us to understand that. A little bit better. Uh, let me read a text to you here. Ezekiel 36 26 is one of my favorite texts and it says here, also I will give you a new heart and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. And then let me read to you a little text here, or, uh, sorry, a, a quote, not a text, but um, it's from Christ Object Lessons. It's a book written back in the late 1800s, and uh, it's just a beautiful little book talking about the, the parables and explaining the parables a little bit here. But this says uh, on page 159, no outward observances can take place of simple faith and entire renunciation of self. But no man can empty himself of self. We can only consent for Christ to accomplish the work. Then the language of the soul will be, Lord, take my heart, for I cannot give it. It is thy property. Keep it pure, for I cannot keep it for thee. Save me in spite of myself, my weak, unchristlike self. Mold me, fashion me, raise me into a pure and holy atmosphere where the rich current of thy love can flow through my soul. You know, this text and then this quote here together it helps us to understand a little bit more on what our heart should look like and what our heart looks like before we actually confess or before we receive power to overcome temptation and evil. And uh, oftentimes when we're tempted to do something wrong or evil, uh, something that is considered a sin, then we're... We're, we we want to do what we want to do, and uh, you know the Holy Spirit comes and tells us, you know if you keep going you're going to sin, you know if you click right there you're going to sin, if you go over there you're going to you're, you're going to be tempted, and uh, and so the, the Holy Spirit tries to help us before we come to the point where we have to confess, but uh, we need to recognize that our heart is dirty. Our heart is evil. Our will is depraved. Uh, when it comes down to it, I want to do what I want to do, and uh, whether it's good or bad for me, it does. It makes no difference. But uh, I just want to do what I want to do, and that's selfish. And so we have to recognize that we we are this way. And uh, and so let me give you a little story to to illustrate this. Um, when my son was four years old, we had had family worship that morning. A few hours later, we, uh, my son was playing with his toys and he says, uh, he says, Dad, am I going to disobey today? And uh, when, uh, in our home, when, when my kids disobey, there's consequences for those actions. And so, and he knew that at age four, uh, because the day before he had gotten in trouble for something and he didn't want to get in trouble again. And so his question was, Dad, am I going to disobey? I told him, uh, son, I don't know, but if you do, just remember it was your choice. You know, I, I didn't make you do it, and uh, but it was your choice to choose to disobey if that's what happens. And he said, uh, he says, well, I don't want to disobey. And I said, well, I hope you don't, but just remember if you do, it's your decision that uh, that caused that. And so he says, okay, well, well, I hope I don't. I said, well, I hope you don't either. And so he continues playing and uh, a little while later, it's time for him to go lay down for a nap. And uh, I told him, uh, Caleb, why don't you put your toys away and let's go lay down for a nap. And he stood up and he got real stiff and he said, but I don't want to. And uh, he stomped his foot even. <laughs> and I, I, said, uh, I said, Caleb, do you remember that question that you asked me? Now's your chance. And that's all I said to him. And I turned to walk away expecting him to be obedient and, and uh, not to earn my love. Uh, but because he does love me, I expected him to be obedient. And, um, 
I already love him, and so I couldn't love him any more or less by his decision. And so he he said something to me that uh, I didn't quite hear at first. And I said, he said, uh, Daddy, can we pray? And I thought for a second, because I'd turned and I'd already taken two steps away. And he said, uh, when he said this, and so I, I thought he said, can we play? So I wanted to make sure I heard him correctly. And he said, uh, I, I said, what did you say? He goes, Daddy, can we pray? And I said, um, well, <laughs> yeah, let's pray right now. And uh, so we knelt down there and, and uh, by the couch, and he's, I said, uh, now Caleb, I didn't, I didn't uh, ask you to pray. I said, you're the one that wanted to pray, and uh, I'm going to just let you pray. I'm not going to tell you what to say. I'm not going to help you. And so he said, okay. And so he closes his eyes, folds his little four-year-old hands, and he says, dear Jesus, will you give me a new heart to help me obey? <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. And so he says, as he gets up after saying amen, he hurries and puts his toys away, and he's giggling the whole time he's doing it. And he goes and gets in bed within just a couple of minutes. I didn't have to tell him to get in bed again. I didn't have to tell him to put his toys away again. He just did it, and he was happy to do it. And uh, when I, I went, after I closed the door, I went back into the living room, and I'm thinking to myself, what just happened here? <laughs> Where did this kid learn this from? I don't recall teaching him this. But, uh, but you know, he, he, I believe that the Lord helped him to do that, to teach me something, and, uh, and hopefully to teach all of us something, and how we should be when we want to do what we want to do, even though it's wrong for us and bad, rather than just, you know, white-knuckling it and, and doing what's right anyways just because it's right, that's not obedience. Obedience comes from the heart because we love Jesus. And we, we don't always want to do what is right. And that should be a red flag to us. And we should remember this text here that I just read. Remember the quote that I just read here, Lord, take my heart for I cannot give it. Sometimes we can't even give our heart to God. We have to ask God to take it from us. Because when we give it sometimes, we're, we're asking, uh, we, we say, Lord, I'm going to give you my heart. And then... When it comes down to doing something we want to do, we go and we take it back from him. <laughs> and so we need to just, sometimes we need to beg and plead with God to take our heart because we cannot give it. I want to do this so hard, Lord. Lord, take my heart. Give me a new spirit. Give me a new heart. Give me your heart so I can do what you want me to do. And friends, that's surrender. Surrender is not works. Surrender is surrender. And uh, friends, I hope that you will learn to surrender before it comes to the point of confession. Next time we're going to talk a little bit more about confession. But friends, I just want you to remember Jesus loves you no matter what happens. No matter what you've done in your past, Jesus loves you. God bless you. And you have a good day.